Hi, everyone. Good evening. I'm going to apologize for my voice. I've had a cold and then lost my voice a little bit um, over the weekend. So teaching these past two days has been very interesting. Um, so you guys get to experience that a little bit tonight as well. If you don't mind in the chat box, if you could just drop your um, where you teach, um, that'd be great. And then your response to the icebreaker here. And we'll get started in just about a minute. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah. You guys are getting a lot of snow. I see that. In Arizona. All right, folks, if you don't mind, just also just share your response to the icebreaker um, in the chat as well. I would really appreciate that. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, welcome you all to um, today's skill clinic on graphic biographies. I'm so excited to be um, going through this with you all. For me, graphic biographies did not come naturally, but when I started using them with my students and I saw how much they really got into them, I had to then be like, okay, I need to, you know, make myself understand how um, graphic biographies work a little bit more. And they've really been transformational in my classroom. And I hope that as we go through this today, I can learn um, from you all, maybe some of you are more experienced with it even um, more than I am at this point. And we can all learn from each other as we go through. So I'm really looking forward to that. So um, again, if you could just drop your responses to the this question here from the um, icebreaker um, in the um, chat, and I'll call out some people to um, share out as well um, as we move on. So um, for today, our agenda, we're going to um, jump into that um, do now that uh, you saw there on the interest screen. We're going to talk a little bit about the background of um, um, graphic biographies as we go through. And then we're going to um, jump in and do some activities as well and um, get you all on out of here for the rest of your night. Um, so our objectives, we're going to be looking deeply at this OER approach um, to close reading graphic biographies. I don't know if you're familiar with our um, regular close reading um, protocol, but this one looks specifically at um, graphic biographies. And we're going to discuss and share interventions that support student understanding of close reading graphic biographies. And of course, explore various um, implementations of the close reading graphic biography tool in your classrooms. So for this evening, obviously, you know, I know some of you are maybe still at home, maybe still at school, except for Frank in New York, who's having a snow day. Um, and um, so, you know, if you need to jump in and ask any questions, I would love for you to just, you know, unmute or do the little raise hand um, feature and um, we'll recognize you. Megan, my fabulous um, right hand is here and um, she'll be um, helping to, um, you know, facilitate responses this evening as well. And obviously just throw any questions as well um, before you forget them into the chat box. Um, I think those will be really um, great. Obviously, I'd love to see all of you. Um, so camera on is like preferred, but obviously you might be juggling some things and that's fine as well. It's, I just appreciate your um, participation more than anything else. And obviously, like, you know, if you need to step away or whatever, um, just, make, just do that. Feel free to do that. All right, so let's jump back over here now and um, take a look at this image here. So what story is this cartoon telling? How do you know this? And then what historical thinking skills are you or your students using when you're analyzing political cartoons? If anybody wants to jump off, um, mute and jump in the conversation, definitely. And um, we can also go through and um, take a look at some of the responses in the chat, but I definitely love to hear from um, some of you. I do see some incredible responses in the um, chat where um, Linda says the precarious um, 
liberty, how precarious liberty is and how many um, concepts, ideas slash events have influenced it. And Kathy said, the cartoon shows the story of, um, oops, sorry, my chat is moving now. <laughs> um, um, instability of the development of understanding of liberty, the constitution and the issues around it, as well as what contributed to its development. Balance of liberty, um, I love that idea is expanding um, freedom versus negative freedom. It's an excellent concept to bring up there, right? Slavery could not support the union. And anybody else, anybody who I shared out um, or wants to jump off and expand on any of this, especially this question about, right, what historical skill are we using here as um, we go through this? All right, I'll jump in. I'm Kathy Forrester, hi. Um, so, because there's so much to read on it, but obviously at the base, you've got the origination of the concept of liberty that the nation was founded on, but that in and of itself is very, a, a wide degree of understanding for some people as to what constitutes liberty. So it's, can be a precarious base to sit on, but then you've got the contradictory, contradictory concept of slavery, which you can't have the two and have a decent foundation because they contradict one another. Um, but then, because it even says, but it still rests upon an unstable foundation of fundamental contradiction, which exactly is what that is. And then you've got all this other stuff which contributed to interpretation and the whole idea of the constitution being a living document and us changing and and those kinds of things and what the con what the country was founded on so there's a lot of weight there throughout that also makes this whole thing a very precarious thing to balance and try and find the reasonable midline i guess that makes it work so. Yeah, um, Kathy, that's some really good insights that you just shared. And also some of the things that students are gonna pick up as they go through this um, image, right? These are the kind of little pieces that they'll be um, pulling together. Maybe not one student, but one student will say something and then another student. And what I find is that as students are looking at um, these graphic biographies, oftentimes one student is like, oh, I didn't realize that. Right, and so I love what you um, did there by pulling all of those um, smaller parts um, together. And and you, I that sorry, I just had another thought. If you look at the different pieces, like Louisiana versus Marbury versus Madison, all of these different things are also essentially, to some degree, contradictory of one another, because mm -hmm. that's part of what contributed to conflicts over states' rights versus individual liberty versus you know, what overall is the Constitution saying about people as a whole and their rights and liberty? Excellent. That's, I, I mean, that's another incredible point there too, right? And so to point out the contradictory nature of this, and that's one thing I really love about how um, the graphic biographies are set up often, it's that, you know, it's showing you different parts of an individual or different parts of a topic and students need to be able to go in and pull that out. And as I was going to say before, I saw Eric put in the chat, right, about context. Using context a lot in this process is going to be so crucial. So I don't know if, Eric, you had anything else to say about that, but I would love if you jumped in. But I also um, see, oh, as a Canadian, um, we don't do the supporting death, but this image alone makes me want to get this book and read it. <laughs> Great. Anybody else wanted to jump in and add anything else to what um, Kathy brought up here? Anybody else that had in the chat? Well, and um, along with what Eric said about um, contextualization in the um, chat, right? Students are gonna be um, using so many other historical um, skills here as well, right? Because they're gonna be coming in and they're gonna be looking at comparison, right? What are some of the, um, the aspects 
of um, these graphic biographies looking at um, similarities and differences, right? They're also going to be looking at causation as well, what might have caused particular um, events to occur as well. So they're going to be using multiple um, historical skills here um, in um, the graphic biography analysis process. So um, thank you all um, for um, that. So just a little bit of um, background about um, graphic biographies, right? So these are gonna be short narratives of a person or a group or an object, and they are composed of art and text together. And so these research, um, uh, these are research and design so that students can make meaning of these, you know, I, different ideas, different peoples, different concepts as well. And so they're selected to give a broad representation focusing on groups and communities that are usually excluded from the historical narrative. And they're also designed to specifically serve as evidence to support students' inquiry. So we're going to support, extend, and challenge um, what students already know. So my question to you here now is, how familiar are you with graphic biographies and how have you used them if you've used them in your classrooms? So I'd love to hear some, from some individuals here. I'll go. Um, I'm 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 somewhat familiar with them. I've used quite a few of them, um, and I try to use them either with the kind of three short reads strategy, or sometimes with like visual um, visual thinking routines, like a see, think, wonder. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the extended biographies too. So I like you know trying to figure out how to pair the regular bios with the uh, extended ones um, has been sometimes kind of challenging. But I I agree with you. It's students really love them. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that, Craig. Um, I, I'm just jotting down here, see, think, wonder, because I'm here to steal ideas as much as I'm here to share. Um, and I love that. I think that um, I'll actually implement some a, a see, think, wonder with some of these, especially with my um, ninth graders at first year before we jump into the um, three close reads protocol. I really love that idea. And I saw some other people here in the chat, but again, if anybody else wants to come up, um, mute and um, share out, um, they can as well. My students will be doing a graphic biography book club in April. Pick one of five options. Okay. Hi, um, I use, hi, sorry, I just joined a little late. Um, I use uh, uh, several of them, and I, I want to learn how to use them better and, and more of them. But I, one I use is called uh, Big Black Stand at Attica. And um, I teach a lesson in a class called um, History of Mass Incarceration. And um, I'm looking at the, it helps round out the information about it. And so in, we pair it with a movie about Attica, and um, it really gives a uh, depth to some of the characters in the movie and so um i like using them for that to kind of pull out and, and give depth in a more condensed way and i also the the one you were showing um to me seems like it's really useful in terms of a timeline too because i think a, a written timeline can eyes can glaze over but um in that kind of format i think it sticks a little bit more the building block kind of format Thanks, Chris, for that. And I love that you talk about how much depth it can bring into um, the subject, right? I think one of the things with like, the graphic biographies too is like, because they're often about subjects that students don't know about, it, it drives them to think more deeply about A, that human experience often if, if it's focused on a person and also bring in the larger context of what was happening around that time. So I think that's one of the strengths of um, the graphic biographies. So graphic, no, graphic novels are a staple in some homeschooling communities, especially for kids with language-based disabilities and ADHD, or a current read is They Called Us and in Grade Five. Okay, great, and Social Studies, World War II. 
So, I mean, there are a lot of graphic novels that are um, coming out now. Um, and I was just working with um, some teachers up in um, New Jersey um, a couple of months ago, and their whole um, English department is um, looking at um, social justice issues through graphic biographies. So I think that's incredible there. Wonderful. All right. So um, any other points here before I move on? I just want to make sure I hear from as um, wide a range of people as possible. Or even if you have just a question to jump in on, um, please um, don't be afraid to. And, we, and if you think of one later, you can always come back. Okay? So let's talk about um, skill developments here. There's a graphic biographies. What they're going to do is they're going to force students to engage right in sort of a non-linear um, reading while also presenting nuanced perspective through the illustrations that are going to help students ask questions, apply disciplinary concepts, and evaluate the authenticity of the source as well. And so this will then help them to draw better conclusions about the material. And so if we're doing this properly, right, a graphic biography can be used as sort of a mini inquiry um, with students as well. And I know one of the things that I had to work on um, personally when dealing with um, graphic, biogra biogra graphic biographies is because I did not know how to read non-linearly. So it was, it, for me, I like, you know, very straight lines and so it, Students, however, they don't mind where to start um, usually, and I think that's part of the that's a part of it that um, is endearing to them because they're like, you know, I can start wherever um, on this panel that I want. So in terms of um, skills, right? So which critical or historical thinking skills are students grappling with when using biographies? Are these lower or higher level um, skills on the Bloom taxonomy chart? in terms of decoding lit literacy and um, to empathize with people's individuals. How can your students learn to better decode text through analysis of art and text and graphic biographies? And then in terms of claim testing through scale switching, right? How can our students use individual graphic biographies as evidence to test larger claims? And that's one of the things I've worked a lot with my students on to get them to think of these as some of those in my AP classes. It's like, you know, how do you use this as those illustrative examples um, for, you know, writing your LEQs, for example, your long essay questions. And then a focus on inclusivity. How can graphic biographies help you build authentic inclusivity in your course rather than just add-ons? And I would love some feedback from um, the group on any of these, whether it's a question or, how you would answer these based on your experience working with um, graphic biographies in your classroom. Again, so like if you have questions um, on any of these, um, hopefully I can, by the end of this session, some of these questions are answered for you and where you can provide, you know, greater insight in how um, you see this playing out um, in your classroom as well using graphic biographies. And this is one is one of my um, favorites here as well, the genre. So let's jump into the close reading. Um, process. So why close reading? So we believe in close reading. So students not only decode information, but they also deeply understand the content well enough to apply it. Without making it through the entire progression of reading from basic decoding to application, it's difficult to make history usable. So how do we help students read all the content closely? Through an approach we call three close reads, a practice that's been borrowed from long established methodologies and best practices for teaching reading. So my question um, to everyone here is, why is close reading an important skills 
skill for students to have? And then what instructional practices or approaches to close reading do you use that have been helpful for your students? I'd love to hear from some of you, whether in the chat or just unmute and jump in and share your um, insights here. My pen ready to jot down some good ideas because I know they're out there. Starting with how to how to build their understanding of how graphic narratives are built and the language that um, we use when discussing graphic novels before we even get to talking about the person and the history. It's great. So I guess that's doing like a little bit more background work on what graphic biographies are with them before you jump in. I think that's what you're saying there. Steven, I think you got cut off. <laughs> Maybe hit that enter button a little too fast. And again, if anybody wants to jump off mute and jump in and share, I'd love to hear from you. I'll give people another opportunity to just drop um, something in the chat too before I move on. Yeah, I I, I could add about the the close reading. I I. Um, I view it as an important skill just because it, it, my, what I try to tell the students is it's reading with intention. Um, and so we do a lot of investigative work, um, in our class. And so I, I want them, you know, I, I'm sure we've all been there where we read something for 20 minutes at a time and we're like, wait, what did we just read? Um, and so it's kind of training the brain to really focus in on what it is you're looking for. So again, in my class with it being, investigative questions that we're using evidence to answer those questions. I need them to be more alert in their reading, more active in their reading. And then to build that skill, we use like a key system. So um, star the main point, underline keywords that you don't know. So we get rid of barrier words. Um, so it has, you know, scaffolding built into it and just kind of training the brain to read in a different way, a way that's more academic as opposed uh, to a more leisurely version of reading that they've probably done for most of their life. Um, Derek, I love what you brought up there about reading for intention, right? Because at the end of whatever they're reading, they need to apply it in some way, apply that um, content, right? And so I love that notion of reading for intention and how obviously like that's the goal here of a close read, right? And then I love the key system that you outlined, you know, removing those barrier words, those built-in scaffolding for students to get access to that content to then be able to use it. And that's the true aim here of a, of a close read process is to get students right beyond just the text, but how can I then be able to use this information that's in the text? So um, thank you for that. I love that idea. Stevens, oh, sorry. Oh, let me see what um, Steven said here in class for close read is to have students choose what they think are the three most important words on the page, and then construct a new sentence that summarize what they see as a central idea of that particular page. I think it forces them to slow down a bit in their reading. Definitely slowing down a bit in their reading is um, important for them to process as well. Um, and then specifically when we're looking at um, a graphic novel, it might have them make a quick sketch a part of the page that they think is particularly important. Okay, great. I love that idea as well. And I, I saw that Megan dropped here in the, oh, this is from Chris. <laughs> okay. Um, highlighting new or confusing things in the text, making notes, writing questions, noting contradictions in the margins, writing them down. I love, love, love all of this. And this is so much of this is that reading process that I think that Derek was like highlighting as well, right? Um, taking it chunk by chunk and going through because obviously after you've read something for the first time, you might've missed so much. 
And so doing a second read, especially with taking notes, right? Um, as you do that, like Chris is pointing out here, right? Pulling out important ideas, defining terms, um, those are also um, important as well. Cornell notes organizer when reading through. Beautiful. And all of these are strategies that you can use in a close read um, protocol to just, again, um, as Derek said, right, make sure students are reading with intention so that after they've read over that text, they're able to now use that information, um, whichever way that task um, demands of them. Oh, this is incredible, folks. Thank you all. Um, so then let's um, look at um, this approach to um, close reading. So here, we're gonna be looking at um, the three close reading graphic um, biographies, right? So in our um, first read, we're making some observations, right? So we're gonna begin by skimming the images that are there, um, you know, cause again, the images are telling a story as much as the words are. And I think that's one of the things that are that is kind of compelling and um, to use Derek's term here, barrier removing for students because they can see some of what the um, the graphic biography is saying through just the images alone and not have to just rely on um, text as well. And then so, right, um, you, figuring out from students, like, you know, how do they know what direction um, to read in? What, what shapes or colors are most notable, right? What different types of texts are present there as well? And then jumping into that second read, right? Describe, draw, or cut and paste, right? Some evidence that will tell you what the creator's argument is. And evidence can include text, but it can also include image. It can also include design. Because I know I approach this differently with my ninth graders versus my AP students when we look at graphic biographies, because my AP students can do a lot more of pulling on, um, you know, a larger amount of um, historical context that they have um, than say my ninth graders who I have going to this in a more methodical way, step by step, right? And then in terms of um, read through, we're looking to connect, right? So what are we learning about this person's life? How this person's life connect to the larger historical narrative um, at that time? So any questions so far about the process? Any questions so far about this process? All right, so just continuing um, on, right? As we go through, we're going to be looking at how do we right move from observe, understand, to connect in the three close read process. Because again, we want to be moving students right from just a you know basic understanding, a shallow understanding of the um, concept and the mm -hmm. content of that text to a more deeper understanding of that text, so that they can then use this information to support an argument later on, for example, how would they pull evidence from um, this text? So we're gonna um, spend um, some time um, looking at the um, observe, right? So that's when we look at the elements um, of the comic and begin to figure out what's gonna go on um, during um, this phase here. So when we jump into the um, three close reads, we're going to be um, looking at what is presented there in the um, three close reads. And um, Megan is dropping in the um, chat the um, graphic biographies tool. And you can um, click on um, that to um, pull that up and get kind of like follow along um, with um, what we're going to be um, doing here or as we jump into our next activity. So we're going to be um, looking at this comic on the next page. And so we're going to be jumping into it and taking a look at, OK, so what we what are we doing when we're in this first part of the um, three close reads, the observe? What are some of the things that we need to be pulling on as we go through? Any questions for me so far before we jump into this? Okay, so let's jump in. 
And so this is um, Ottilie Bader, and um, Megan also dropped that, uh, that graphic biography in the chat as well, so you can go ahead and um, click on that. And we had a funny little um, chat earlier about pronunciations because it's so funny because like, I'm always, I, I just blame it on my accent sometimes too, but sometimes I have students in my class say like, this is Sean, well, I was watching, um, you know, some sort of history video and they're like, this is how that person pronounced it. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so we wanna jump um, here into um, making some observations here for um, the Ottilie Bader um, graphic biography. So we're gonna be um, jumping into breakout rooms. Megan, are we all set for our um, breakout rooms? Okay, awesome. And so in your um, breakout groups, you're gonna work through the pages of the um, graphic um, reading introduction activity. So as you go along, I want you to fill out your um, graphic reading tool and then discuss with your um, groups. So after you fill that out um, and discuss how you could use this in your classroom, I also want you to think, how could you extend student learning beyond this tool as well? So using the tool as like your base, but then also how are you as a teacher thinking, hmm, what are some ways I can make this better um, as well? And so um, I see that Megan also dropped the um, discussion questions there in your, um, in the chat as well. Any questions before we jump into breakout rooms? All right, so I think we're all set to go. So we'll just give everyone a few more seconds just to get back in. Probably just trying to get in the last word and then we will discuss. All right, so I would love to hear from um, some of you. What were some of the things that you were talking about in your um, groups? What were some of the things that you've gleaned from this tool so far? What are the ways that you're thinking you could use this tool in your classroom? What are the ways that you're thinking that maybe you could expand on this tool in your classroom? Again, you can just jump off mute and share out loud or um, drop your thoughts in the chat. especially if you picked up anything new um, from what um, you discussed in your um, groups as well. Well, in, in room four, we were we were very impressed with the tool and we were impressed with the, the graphic bios. And we were talking a little bit about you know, where can we put this into our lesson here? When, and we were thinking, you know, definitely like an introduction to a topic here. Um, I, I teach, um, High school, my, my partner is a sixth grade teacher, so it was kind of interesting how we would kind of frame it up for our situation. But I was mentioning, I don't know if, if you're familiar with the edu protocol people, but the edu, edu protocols are kind of, it's basically a way to get students interacting with each other and, and kind of working with, with content and also giving them kind of a scaffolded look at what your lesson is going to be like each day. But every single day, it's a little bit different. So one of the edu protocols is called the cyber sandwich, and you typically give two students a, you know, same source material, maybe a secondary source versus a primary source. And they do a little bit of work with, um, this is what mine says, this is what yours says, these are the similarities, these are the differences here. And then they're they're kind of looking at well, what might kind of be the, the reason for these things not all being together in the, in the same source here. So I thought this was perfect. Um, it's a, this would definitely help my students, you know, kind of with that historical empathy piece. So it's not just a name or a robot or a statistic that's going through this. It's an actual human being. So you can see them on the panel here. You can see their facial expressions. Or I noticed, you know, the one lady had her arms folded and didn't look like she was super happy at that time. So I could see this as kind of a beginning piece. I can see this as even kind of contextualization at the end, you know, causation, anything with that. I, I found this to be super helpful for, for my group, for sure. 
Um, thanks for sharing that, Jim. I really appreciate that. And um, edu protocol. Okay, like I got that right, right? Okay, okay, great. No, and um, that discussion too about where to use them in the um lesson, I think, is a worthwhile conversation to um have. Um, I have definitely used one of these as a lesson with my ninth graders and then with my um, AP students, I'm using it as a do now activity as well, right? So um, I think that's definitely a worthwhile conversation to have. I'd love to hear from some others. Thanks, Jim, for sharing. Appreciate that. Um, in room three, we talked about how we liked how much was packed into just a few frames. We also talked about what resources students could use to create their own um, short graphic text. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an, also a worthwhile activity in encouraging students to get to that step of, okay, so like, let's create a panel. What's an additional panel that we could add on um, to here as well? Yeah, in that same group, um, I forgot who I expressed it, but it, one of the things was said was one of the biggest fears is around the artwork part of it. And um, some students love to do that, uh, a number don't, and having some tools like Pixton or other things that are uh, let you create their own comics where you can put your background and pick, pick your characters with thought bubbles to be able to um, make it physically. And then also pairing it with the key themes and concepts of the unit, either before or after, what, what are the key themes and ideas we can pull out of it? Or as they're potentially doing more research and making their own, how do, the, do they put them into this? Um, so reinforcing and, and understanding those key ideas and themes and concepts. And I see, oh, thanks for sharing um, that, Chris. And I see somebody put in there that um, Chris helped me out by recommending Pixton for the creation process. Okay, another idea I'm getting tonight. Um, so another thing too that um, Chris that you um, brought up was about students, you know, maybe being apprehensive about the hard part is to just like also like remind them of the multi um, dimensional parts of the um, graphic biographies, right? It's not just the art that matters, also the words on the page matter too. So. I oftentimes, I encourage students to just, you know, play your strengths here, right? If you don't feel like, you know, you're Michelangelo worthy, right? Maybe, you know, you are the person who should do the narrative um, instead um, when, you, when they do this. So, yeah, I haven't really played much around with them doing it using like a digit, digitized tool. Um, so, but I'm definitely going to um, look into um, the um, Pixton um, creation process for that. Anyone else? And uh, also, I wanted to go back to something that um, Jim said because this reminded me about the humanization piece of this. And he mentioned, you know, looking at um, facial expressions, for example. And that's one of the things, too, I, I think is also another way that graphic biographies speak to students because they can interpret a lot more of like what's happening in the text based on the artwork that they're seeing around it. So that gives them a little bit of scaffolding um, to access that text um, as well. So that's just another um, you know, useful part of these graphic biographies. And I would love to hear from at least maybe one more person before um, we move on. You know, again, just like, you know, how do you see yourself using this in your classroom? What benefits do you see? Maybe even some drawbacks and, you know, what questions do you have so far about this? How could you maybe expand on this as well? Uh, okay. share what I'm doing with the uh, grade 11 chemistry teacher. She has been spending the year teaching students uh, about different scientists and, you know, the, the brilliance that they, they bring to the field of chemistry. 
But she also talks about the fact that not all of the science that they develop gets used for productive, humane reasons. Sometimes there's a darkness to science, not just the light. So I'm going to collaborate with her uh, at the end of the year, and the students are going to create perhaps one page, but double-sided, where on one side of the page, it will highlight the scientists and their work and the good that their discoveries have brought the world. And then on the flip side, it'll be the sort of ramifications of that science in the wrong hands with the wrong goals or intentions in mind. So this is the first year we're trying it. So it could be a glorious disaster. We don't know, but um, this is kind of what our vision is. And we're hoping that we'll both have done enough in our classrooms because we share the exact same students to set them up for success. I'll be responsible for how do you tell a story using graphic graphics and text and she'll do the science part. Thanks for sharing that. Um, and also, like, I love that idea too, right? Of like um, a back and um, front, right? One sided showing this, one sided showing that. And also, like, I mean, when you look at um, pretty much all of these graphic biographies, there is a sort of pattern to them where there, it's like they're looking at somebody's life in the first part of their life, right? And then how it how they end up as well. And so that sort of like um, dimension of the graphic is also important in how the story um, is told as well. So that's really great. And I love the interdisciplinary nature of that. Okay, all right. I'm gonna need to go talk to some science teachers now. It's really cool. All right, if anybody else wanted to jump in, please do. But if not, I'm also just gonna move on. But if you know you wanna jump in, don't. Um, um, oh. uh, I think you can build on that, um, what you're talking about, where you're incorporating a couple of um, different curriculum. Like I could do this with some of the English teachers and this would probably get the kids engaged too more in their classes because in our school, the English teachers have a two hour block where each of us has a single block, the English, because they do the literature portion in one block and then or in one portion of the block, and then they do English grammar and stuff like that in the other portion of the block. So they've got them for a time. So doing something like this and coordinating efforts with the English teachers might be a good, um, a good way to use this too. Kathy, don't get me started on unequal distribution of time, okay? Um, but yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a great um, idea there too. And also, like, just the nature of a lot of these graphic biographies are interdisciplinary, right? Because they're going to show you, for example, you know, an engineer or somebody in the sciences or somebody in the math, like, you know, so that I think is a great way to build that um, into this, build on that um, interdisciplinary um, connection already. So I love that. Thanks for sharing that, Kathy. And also forgetting me, you know, I'll like, because I'm going to go back to school tomorrow and complain. <laughs> um, so I, we're going to be jumping back into um, groups um, here. And what I want you to be doing is I want you to be think, thinking about how are you going to be um, using this in your classroom with students? And so you're going to be reviewing the um, tool that Megan just dropped in, in, the, um, in the chat. Um, and she dropped the, the questions in there as well. So essentially looking at how do um, you move students with this um, work? How would you modify, right, for students? You're gonna kind of be reading over um, what a student has um, submitted. And then you're gonna be um, thinking about what are some ways that you could provide feedback for the student to like, you know, increase opportunities for growth here as um, well. So feedback for students, 
How would you do this? And then take it another step. How are you gonna use this to reach a larger swath of your student population? Whether it's a student with an IEP, you know, um, um, English language learners, um, students who are not really enthusiastic about maybe reading or writing, for example, how could you use this as a way to get um, more buying um, from them um, in this process? So I want you to go in and I would love for each group to sort of designate a um, spokesperson for um, when we come back, you can figure out how you want to do that. Maybe somebody will volunteer, but if not, just like, you know, say like the person who is like, you know, been teaching for the shortest amount of time, pick on them. Or maybe the person who's been teaching for the longest, you know, so, um, and then we'll come back together. And I would love if we could do this in about 15 um, minutes, we could um, do this um, process um, in that time. So if there are any questions um, for me on this, make sure my directions were clear. If you want any clarity, um, once you open the dots, I think it will make a little bit more um, sense as well. Okay, and if we're all set there, um, you can just go ahead into your groups. So welcome back, everyone. I would love to hear some of the amazing conversations that were happening in your groups. What were some of the things that you shared about how you would modify this tool? What are some of the ways that you're already thinking about making this, you know, more approachable for a broader, a broader um, group of your students um, in terms of how they approach this? Um, as well, any modifications that you would make to it, or the sort of feedback you would give to ensure that students, you know, are getting closer to actually using the tool in a way that is meaningful for their learning. Again, you can drop anything in the chat, or I'd love if you could jump off mute as well. I know one of the things, uh, while I wait for people to, you know, muster the courage to jump in, one of the things I'll share out in terms of modifications that I have made in my classroom um, with um, the three close read tool is, um, especially for my students who are struggling readers, I, um, that observation piece is key for getting them started for me. So I tell them just, look at the image and just make a list of all the things that you see here um, in the image. And then what I'll do too is I'll point out, well, oh, some of the things that you're saying here are actually talked about in the text here, here, and here. So go through and now go back into the text and see if you can make those connections with the things that you identified, that you saw, that you observed. And I think that's a great stepping stone to then get them in. Because once they see that, they're like, oh, this what that that's what this means. Okay, and I pointed that out. That gives them a lot more encouragement to just jump in um, further um, independently um, into you know, the text and into the next steps of the three close read as well as well. Yeah, I would say this, no doubt about it, it levels the playing field for a wide uh, variety of students here. You Even primary sources, which can be kind of short in, in some cases, they can be very robust with vo vocabulary. And you know, when students are given this, it's kind of like they feel like, oh, okay, well, it's, it's pictures. I, I can handle this. I don't have to read yeah. reams and reams of, of documents here. And I was thinking, especially even with like sourcing, my students struggle with grabbing like here's like they, they like to say well you know yeah i just grabbed the sentence out of the source here and that becomes my evidence it's like well yeah that no doubt about it that does kind of speak to this question here but then where's kind of the relevance how does this you know sentence that you picked here 
as your evidence, how does how is that something that actually matches up with this question? So I think that they can look at these panels and say, oh, okay, in this panel, I can make a connection between you know the, the the look on this person's face or the action that I'm seeing here, and I can connect that then to this question that is being asked here. And I I think you know this you know for me it would be you know, we we probably wouldn't be able to do the whole tool immediately. You know we probably take a you know good section or two each time, and then every other you know, subsequent lesson you know, we we already are experts at this this one part here the observe part. So now we're going to move on, take a look at this next piece until we're you know. Kind of like it's second nature to the students. So I think this is very well laid out. I would just maybe take it in, in sections, kind of going from there, and then use it for sourcing, kind of going and and you, know, you can use this in a variety of ways. I think. Um. No, Jim. Thanks for sharing that, and I definitely agree with you with not jumping in necessarily with the whole tool right away and building um on it. I know I did that at first because I was like, oh, this is a great tool, and it was kind of like, oh, okay, need to pause. Okay, let's. Um, build on, especially with my um, my ninth graders. But another thing that you brought up that I love is the whole idea of sourcing too, because pulling um, evidence from the text and jumping in and saying, okay, so here's why I'm pulling this piece of evidence here, and here's how it actually applies to um, you know the larger um, topic. So. I think that's uh, one of those key skills because I'm like, okay, so look at how the panel is separated, right? Why would you put a piece of evidence from down here, right? To like actually maybe look at point of view, for example, versus like up here, right? Why might this piece of um, the, why might this panel down here be better for um, you to pull, you know, audience from? Um, you know, that kind of skill work too, I think it's like really good um, with how the um, organ the graphic biographies are paneled. So it's nice for students to be able to do that. And what what is like appropriate evidence as well? I'd love to hear from some others. Thanks for that, Jim. And again, it's not just, you know, how would you modify this again? What are some ways that you're thinking that you might, you know, approach this with your students? What are some of the challenges that you might anticipate as well? And maybe you have like a question about that. Um, definitely, please jump in and share it out. No problem. And also to just like how many people are thinking like this is like a tool especially if you haven't used it that you're like okay i see this as something that's like ready made that i can you know use as a starting point with um graphic biographies in my classroom i'd love to hear any ideas about that as well i am um... I teach ethnic studies, so it's only a semester class, and um, we have to go through uh, quite quickly through like African Americans. We only get three weeks for because it's only a semester class, and so um, I haven't been able to look at all the selections. But I think it's a great short. It 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 will be a great um, like quick read of like bigger topics since we don't have that long to spend um and we can combine it with other things like in my group they were talking about combining it with um uh primary sources as well and so i think that's a really good like hey keep the kids interests you know by not having everything be quite so heavy um and then we were talking about how kids don't like um you know when i was a kid it was videos were like super exciting video day and, and this was back when you like actually like rolled in the the tv and stuff and now kids are like if it is over 10 minutes it is too long and so this is just you know with com competing with kids who see a new screen every second on social media i think any any 
new resource is a good one so we can sprinkle things out and keep kids eyes off their phones on the subject yeah um, Mara I definitely agree with you on that and it's just again variety right for the students I think it's always nice when you know there's like a variety of mediums that they're going to get information from and this is just another one of those um mediums that they can pull information from it's an easy it's an approach it's a it's an approachable way um to get them to um see that as well and again just the formatting of the graphic biographies the way it's laid out how it tells a story how it explains the concept and the sort of information that they can pull from this um, as well i think that's um useful anyone else? yeah um one of the things that we talked about um and potentially modifying this, um, combining it with um, word banks and vocabulary right on it that um, would help a reader and would help a variety of um, different kinds of learners, IEPs, um, a number of different things. And the, um, one of the questions that was asked uh, or from our group was about um, how do the students know to read from which side, up and down, left to right, et cetera. And um, there is, uh, we could instruct them potentially. One of the thoughts was uh, read one together. And there's also a, um, an aspect of discovering that you go back and reread or you have to piece it together. And I think that that's an amazing skill that this um, allows us to, to practice too. What, what does work? What does go together? What makes sense in this? Um, and so it's a... Um, a way to organize one's thoughts. And that I think can also translate to their writing, <clears throat> like seeing it done here and how do I, oh, I read it this way and I should have gone back in this way and I, I have to put it back together. And so that's a, a, a skill as well. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for that, Chris. And it, again, um, students are gonna jump in on whatever little thought bubble like that you know, attracts them first. And I, I love what you said about, well, that's a skill about going back now and then weaving um, this together. And then when students are like, oh, they're like, oh, I missed that because I didn't read this first, but then I went back and I reread and then this all like made sense to me. And I'm like, oh, that's the goal, right? And so I think that's a really um, good tool as well. I mean, there's a, um, some more like specific um, instructions too in the um, teacher guide for the graphic biographies, which I um, highly encourage um, people to check out um, more in depth as well. But definitely I love your idea too about, you know, um, the um, words that um, students, you know, don't know, like identifying and defining those. What I tend to do a lot of the time with my struggling readers, I can sort of anticipate the terms that they might struggle with. And I will create like a word bank on the board already. Um, or I like might um, print them off and, you know, cut them into like little note cards, for example, and leave them um, by their desk for them to use um, as well. So that's like one strategy that I use um because like you know I can after a couple of weeks with the kids I'm like okay I know what they're going to be struggling with I know what words they might um have difficulty with so then I'll pick out um a few of those um just to help you know so they're not stuck on those at times and then get discouraged all right so I'm just gonna um move us on here and just go over a little um, bit of tips for success. You know, model, model, model. Um, Chris, you said this too about, you know, going through and reading one, reading it through together um, first. That's one of my um, strategies as well. I go through and I read through the um, graphic back, our first one that we do. And I tell them like, this does not come easy to me because this is not how I read. Right. And it, that, that just breaks down so many um, barriers already because they're like, oh, you might have difficulty with this. Oh, that explains why I might have. And then so I'm like, we're going to go through this together. Here are the strategies that we're going to be using. And then once you've used them, often students get so used to them. Right. My students, my AP students, when they come in and they see it for the do now, 
they have 10 minutes to read through it. Um, and then they know we're gonna jump in, we're gonna use the, the guiding questions that are the questions for understanding. They are ready because we've just done it so, so many times as well. And again, reminder to just encourage students to engage with the visuals. They are on um, the text. And um, reference the three close read um, tools for support with um, um, student understanding. Um, ask students to draw a panel before or after um, the graphic using the tools. And that idea um, came up already. So I remember who suggested um, that mm -hmm. one. And then obviously connect the visuals of the graphic histories to other visuals that they might have seen, right? Um, there's the one about the um, Pirate Queen that I connect back to um, Pirates of the Caribbean, right? And then they're like, oh my gosh, that makes sense now. And so I think that's helpful. And establish strong learning foundations for students with the historical thinking skills, like contextualization and corroboration, right? How are we gonna um, pull these in? And this is a great opportunity to use a um, think, pair, share, right? Kind of activity um, with students. And I love that, um, we um, talked about using that KWL um, earlier, which is still in when you tell people I this, um, discovered that. And then um, the emphasis on words and images, I think is important here as well, right? Having students place as much um, you know, effort into decoding the images as they do the text as well, using both of those as equal parts um, evidence. And then so um, next steps, um, if you guys um, want, you can go to the um, OER community and, you know, share your thoughts about the um, close um, read strategy for graphic biographies. Um, Megan just dropped that into the um, chat there as well. You know, you all had some great ideas here um, tonight. Share those out in the community. Ask any sort of follow up questions that you have um of um using graphic biographies as well i think um that would be you could be very very beneficial to people in the community and um i think the community will be very beneficial to you as well and so we have um the uh online teacher community obviously you can go in you know post your questions you see me there i'm, I'm there as well um, a lot. And uh, Megan just dropped in the um, link for how you get your professional development hours um, as well um, in the chat there. And so just to make a quick plug here about the Fundamentals Conference um, that is on Saturday, March 23rd. Um, so we'd love to um, see some of you guys there in the chat. I know I'll be very active there. So um, this was a wonderful, wonderful evening with all of you. And I am so, so, so grateful for your participation and engagement and all the great ideas that you all have shared. And again, find me in the teacher community and um, you know share your wonderful ideas that you shared here as well. Have a good night, everyone.